Let's solve four problems on buoyancy in Archimedes principle. The moment I saw this I, on a website, it reminded me of the good old days. So I thought like, yeah, let's do this. Okay, this is the first one. We have two beakers at the same water level. One has a wooden crate floating in it. We need to fi fi find out which of the two weighs more. How do we do this? Okay, there are a couple of approaches. The one I like is to first take a look at these two and see if I can identify parts which weigh the same. And I can immediately do that. So for example, what I mean is if I draw this boundary, right? And if I just focus on the part which is at the bottom, you can see that they are practically the same things. The amount of water here and here is the same, so they weigh the same. Which means any difference in the weight must come from the top part. Therefore, I just have to concentrate on the top part. So if this weighs more than this, then this whole thing would weigh more. Otherwise, this would weigh more. If the two weigh the same, then the two will weigh the same. So the question now for us is which of these two weigh more? How do we answer that? Well, what's running in my mind, in fact, by the way, you should pause and try, okay? <laughs> you should pause and try. But what's running in my mind is this. We're dealing with fluids here right? Which means concepts of Archimedes principle and buoyancy are right up there. So that's, that's why I'm immediately thinking about Archimedes principle. And if you see, if you see carefully, you'll see that this is the section of water that is displaced by this crate. And that section is this section is the same thing. So this represents the displaced water. This is our displaced water, displaced water. And what does Archimedes principle say? Well, it says that the displaced water, the displaced fluid, the weight of the displaced fluid equals the buoyant force. So from this, I think we can answer our question. Again, pause and see if you can connect all the dots and get the answer. All right, let's see. So let's imagine some numbers. So that's the last thing that I do. I always like to imagine some numbers. It's easier for me when I do that. So let's say this is like two kilograms. Okay, our committee says that this is the weight of the displaced liquid. Now, of course, weight means mg, but I'm gonna ignore g because g is, a con g is gonna cancel out. So it, the weight of this displaced liquid is two kilograms and therefore the buoyant and force acting on this must also be two kilograms. And by the way, do you understand why this has to be true? Why Archimedes principle is true? Well, the reason why Archimedes principle is true is because, well, if this is two kilograms, then the rest of the water must be supporting that two kilograms, so it must be pushing up on it with the force of two kilograms. Otherwise, this over here would not be supported, it wouldn't be stable, it won't stay there, right? But now if, if this water is pushing up on with the force of two kilograms, then this is the exact, practically the same thing. We just saw the bottom is the same. And therefore, the, the force with which you push up has nothing to do with what is on top of it, it has something to do with the atmospheric pressure and the nature of the liquid and how deep it is and all of that is the same. So if over here it's pushing up with two kilograms, over here should, it also should push up with two kilograms and that's what Archimedes principle is all about. All right, okay, let's get back, let's get back. We know that this is two kilograms, it, this is being pushed up with two kilograms, so what should be the weight of the box? Well just like with this thing, this box is also in equilibrium. It's just staying there. Therefore, this box should also weigh two kilograms. And there you go. The two should weigh exactly the same. Exactly the same. All right, on to the next question. This time, we have that same crate completely submerged and we have tied it to the bottom with the help of a string. The question is the same. The level of the water is exactly the same. Which of the two weigh more? Why don't you try and see if you can solve this? All right, so the approach that I'm gonna take is exactly the same. I'm gonna divide this into two parts. The part which is different and the part which looks the same. And that is, if I draw a boundary, it is this part. Can you see that this rest of the water over here and the rest of the water over here is exactly the same? So they should weigh the same, which means all I have to do is look at these two sections. And of course, we can ignore the string completely. Okay, don't have to worry about that. Like the volume of that, okay? All right, I just have to compare these two and think about which one weighs more. And again, at this point, if you haven't solved it, great idea to pause and think a little bit, which of the two weigh more? How would we know? How is this different than the previous case? Okay, well, I know that 
because there's a string that is attached over here, this thing wants to float. That's the reason why there is a string attached in the first place, right? So from that, what can I gather? If this thing wants to float, this means that this must be less dense compared to water, right? It means that, in other words, it means that the, the, displace, the weight of the displaced fluid must be more than its weight. That's why the buoyant force is higher than its weight and that's why it's pushing it up. In other words, this means that this thing should weigh more than this thing. Think about it, right? If this thing has less density compared to this, then if you take the same volume, then they should be lighter. They should be lighter than this part of the water. And therefore, this whole thing must be lighter than this part of the water. In other words, they should weigh less than this. Does that make sense? Um, a point of confusion at this point for me was always, what about the string, or at least the forces on the string, right? I used to think about the tension forces acting over here. Well, over here, the string is pulling down. Let me just zoom in a little bit. The string is pulling down on this box. So shouldn't that sort of like, I don't know, maybe maybe um, show up over here to change the weight? Shouldn't I consider that? So it's a good question. What do you think? Because we need to be crystal clear about every single thing nuance of this problem. So what do you think? Like, should we ha also have considered that? Well, here's the thing, right? We are considering the weight of this whole thing, okay? Which means when you, when you look at the string, you shouldn't just look at this one force acting on the string. There's a force acting from the bottom on the string. Remember, the tension always acts on two sides, okay? Because this thing is stout, if this part of the string is pulling it down, this part of the string is pulling this thing up. The two forces cancel out in this entire system, okay? Not very obvious, not very obvious because we don't have much experience in the real world with this and therefore it's possible to get easily confused but you can see that two forces cancel out and therefore I never ever have to deal with this force. Yeah, so that's problem number two. Let's move on to problem number three. This time we have a heavy iron box inside the beaker. It is kept inside, it's heavy, it's sunk. Question is the same. Which of the two weigh more? And they are again filled to the same height. What do you think? You know the drill by now. See if you can figure this out. Okay, all right. So I can see that the rest of this water weighs the same, which means I only have to compare these. If I just focus on that, which of the two weigh more? How do I figure this out now? Well, again, I'll go back and I'll ask myself, look, this thing sunk inside water, which means that either I can think in terms of density, I know that iron has more density compared to water. Now if it's given iron, it's fine, but if it's not given, the fact that it's sinking tells me that this is more dense compared to the water. If this is more dense compared to the water, it has. A, if you take the same volume with the same amount, this should be heavier than the water. Another way to think about it from Archimedes principle, you could say is that, hey, because it's sunk over here, because it's sunk, that means its weight must be more than the buoyant force. Its weight must be more than the displaced water. This is the displaced water, so the weight over here should be more than displaced water, and there you go. So immediately we have the answer, this should weigh more. This weighs more. Okay, having fun? Last problem. Here's the last one. We have the same iron, um, iron box, but this time it is hanging by a thread over here attached to the ceiling. We're making sure it doesn't sink because we know it's denser than the water. Okay, same level, will it weigh more or less or the same? You know the drill, why don't you try the last one? All right, so again, I don't have to care about the bottom part, I'm gonna ignore. All I have to do is look at the top part of it. Which one weighs more? Well, I know that the iron box will definitely weigh more than this because we know that even if I take the same amount of water as that of the iron box, I know that the iron box is denser so it weighs more. So clearly here is less water. So clearly this weighs more than this. But what's the catch? The thing is there is a string attached. This time the string matters. Can you see why? In the case two, the string was pulling down on the box, making the whole thing heavier, 
but because the box is pulling up on the string on the bottom of the beaker, it made it lighter, the two canceled out. This time notice the string is pulling up on the box, making it lighter, making the whole system lighter. In return, the box is pulling down on the, on the, on the ceiling, but th that force is not measured over here. So can you see that this time, the string's force matters? And that's the key over here. And so I need to figure out how much the box is, uh, appears lighter, how much, the, how much of the weight the string has taken away, and what is the remaining weight that appears over here, and that's the key. How do we do that is the question now. Well again, I'll go back to my basics. I'm gonna assign some number over here. Let's say this is two kilograms. Then I know that the upward buoyant force acting on this must be two kilograms. Hmm, what next? What next? Well, I know the box weighs more than two kilograms. Let's say the box weighs, I don't know, maybe five kilograms. Ooh, okay. If the box weighs five kilograms and the buoyant force is upward two kilograms, then how much should be the string pulling up the box with? Well, it has to balance, the upward force should balance the downward weight, which means it should be pulling up with three kilograms of force. And there we have it. If the string is pulling up on the box with three kilograms of force, the box has lost three kilograms of force. The weighing scale has sort of like lost because if you're pulling up, then you're making it lighter. And therefore, effectively, it weighs two kilograms. The same as this. <laughs> is that a coincidence? Let's check. I don't think so. I mean, if this was, for example, let's say six kilograms, uh, then notice then, again, this will stay the same. To balance it, this would automatically become four kilograms, and therefore automatically it would lose four kilograms, and therefore automatically, oh, automatically it would still have two kilograms. In other words, it doesn't matter what the weight of the box is. You will always find that the moment you submerge it a little bit, the effective weight will just be the buoyant force. And if you think about it, kind of makes sense, um, think about it a little bit, you see that the water is putting up upward of two kilograms force on the object. From Newton's third law, the object must also push back on this with a force of two kilograms, which means the total weight of this should be the whole weight plus the two kilograms force that this is putting, which is the same as over here. That's another way you can argue and you can figure out how much this weight is. Anyways, however you do it, you see that the two should weigh exactly the same. And yes, you could have used the Newton's third law idea to the previous cases as well. Go back and try them and you should get the same answer. You can, there are multiple ways of looking at this, there are different perspectives and you should explore all of them to get a completely detailed understanding, complete crystal clear understanding of what's going on. Okay, I had fun doing this. Hopefully you had fun too. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more such puzzles. There are a lot of them and uh, they're fun to do.